Hello and thank you for joining us tonight. My name is Mike Tellerino, CEO of K9 for Veterans. Tonight, I have a really special guest. Her name is Stephanie Kipowit. She is the Illinois State Representative for District 84. Um, Stephanie has done so many great things. Um, Stephanie is a veteran herself. She served in the Marines from 1990 to 1994. So, oorah to Stephanie. Uh, she's an e, she was an E4 Corporal, tell us a little bit about how you met your husband. I found that really interesting. Oh, and, and since you gave my dates of service, I have to say I served when I was 10. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you just dated me there for a right. moment there, buddy. Um, it was really fun. My I went to Northern Illinois University, and my husband went to Northern Illinois University, and then we just kind of hit it off, and it turns out that he served in the Army a couple years before I served, and he was stationed in Washington, D.C. Uh, he was part of the Old Guard. Well, it's funny how you guys met and you hooked up and it's all good, right? Let me ask you a question. What made you, what makes anybody, especially you, decide to run for office? I mean, that's, that's a huge undertaking. That's a big, that's a lot of work. You just don't wake up and say, you know... I'm going to run for a state representative. or Well, some people do, but I didn't. Um, actually, it started, I had stopped working full-time after my son was born, and I, um, I lived across the street from a park, and I wanted to have the park improved, and it wasn't happening. And so I decided at that point in time to run for alderman in the city of Aurora to make a change in my community. And I served as alderman for nine and a half years, and during that time, I was sitting on the couch complaining about the state of Illinois and, and you know, needing to change things. And my husband says, well, what are you going to do about it? And I right. said to myself, I got to do something about it. And so I uh, launched my campaign for state representative and you I, you know, worked my butt off like any, uh, any mission-oriented veteran would be. You know, we have to get the job done. And I wound up winning my election. Uh, I had a primary and I had a general and I wound up winning it and I've been a state representative almost eight years now. God bless. That's amazing. You know, you've done so many great things for veterans in your time in office. You really have. One of the bills that I'd really like to talk about in particular is the POWMIA flag. Tell us how you, what that's all about. For well, those who don't it, know. It, it came, I guess you could say, across my desk when uh, a group of veterans wanted to fly the POW MIA flag at a, um, a small airport facility. And it, they were told that that was a special interest flag. And that really? it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be flown, MIA a POW flag. MIA flag. And so uh, one of the things we do as state representatives is get input from the community. And this, like I said, came across my desk. And uh, as as you were shocked, I was shocked. Yeah. And uh, we decided to pass a law to say that the uh, POW MIA flag is to be flown at, at all the all the airports and the facilities in the state under the state of Illinois jurisdiction. As it should be. I, I, should can't, be. I can't imagine anybody being against that. It's. I, mean, I think it's a knowledge base. I mean, let's let's just be honest. One percent. One percent of the population are veterans. Ninety nine percent of the populations are not. And and if veterans are not constantly educating and making people aware, they're sometimes some individuals just don't know. They. I guess so. It's just amazing right. that something like that wouldn't just be accepted and, for, you know, for what it for what it is. Um, you have made. Veteran Affairs a priority in your, your term in office, mm. right? I mean, so you be, I guess, that, is that because you're a veteran yourself? You mm. know the shortcomings of what our veterans are, are not getting? Oh, I, I mean, absolutely. Let's just, let's just be honest. Um, we are at the lowest point of veteran representation in our elected offices in, in our history. Um, uh, the DNR, both sides, you come together, I think there's only five veterans in the Illinois House. Out of 118 elected officials, wow. I believe there's only four in the Senate. Uh, out of 49 elected officials, we're at the lowest uh, number of elected. So being a veteran, active duty veteran, served four years active duty, honorable discharge, uh, I have to represent. And, um, you know, with such few numbers of veterans in in the Illinois House, it's, it's my job to represent our veterans. Plus, I'm the only Marine. Right, Ooh, and the uh, only uh, woman veteran right. out of out of both houses. That really, I didn't know that. Yeah, 
So, okay, there, there's another thing that was really important to our veterans. I know myself, what I went through, I went to the Secretary of State to get the <laughs> veterans tag on my driver's mm -hmm. license. I had to go back three times. You didn't bring this, you didn't bring that, you should have had this, time of service, to whatever. And I thought, you know, I mean, look, I'm, I'm asking for a stamp on my driver's license. Here's my DD-214. Right. Showing that I, I did serve and, mm -hmm. and whatever. And it, it was such, I don't know why people just didn't say, the heck with us and walk away. Because it was that crazy to get that thing done. And you, tell us about how you streamline that. Well, again, state representatives such as myself and many others, we listen to the community. And, and that was relayed to me by many other people. And so calling up the Secretary of State, uh, Jesse White is a veteran, you know, he's, uh, right. I believe he's airborne. <laughs> Didn't really? he jump on a perfectly good airplane? Oh, yeah, somewhere else. Uh, yep, so uh, he's a veteran, and I called him up, and I said, you know, this is an issue. And uh, working with his office, we were able to, again, pass uh, legislation that turned into a law that streamlined that situation. I mean, it was crazy. I mean, yeah. that we had to go through all that just to get that on, on our driver's license and stuff. Tell us about any of the bills that you're working on or have worked on. I mean, you're such a advocate of veterans and there's very few state representatives or, or senators that that are really so pro military mm -hmm. pro veteran so having you on the board or uh, representing our us it, it's a, it's a gift it really is because you're going to get things done because you know what it's like right. to be a veteran and the things that we have to go through so tell us a little bit well, yeah, I, I do know a lot about the veteran community. I've been a member of the American Legion and AMBETS, and uh, I got my women, women Marine shirt on. So Hoorah. shout out to my women Marine sisters out there. Um, right. One of the things that I passed that I, I really want to strong, strongly um, touch on is uh, June, I believe it was June 25th, we passed a resolution to establish PTSI Day. I um, I understand the common phrase is post-traumatic stress disorder. Right. I don't believe it's a disorder. I believe it's an injury. Mm -hmm. I believe through uh, proper treatment that, um, you know, this injury can be healed. And uh, calling it a disorder is derogatory. Exactly. And um, really disrespectful to our veterans and anybody that's been through trauma, really. And so um, what I'm promoting is a PTSI, post-traumatic stress injury. Right. Uh, and the people start looking at it as an injury. Um, you don't walk around, if you broke your arm, you don't walk around saying, hey, I have broken arm disorder. That just I mean, has the, the temptation of it, being broken. It, right. It's just, it's, it's just, it's not the proper terminology and we need to start working on that. So I passed the resolution the Illinois House supported unanimously to start talking about uh, post-traumatic stress as an injury and not as a disorder. Um, the second thing we're working on is Illinois and veterans claims. Illinois is one of the lowest states in the nation uh, with regards to processing our veterans claims. And so we're creating a task force, a statewide task force to look at the issues, such as what you're talking about, to listen to the issues that veterans are having with their claims. Uh, when, when they're dealing with a, a veteran service officer right. or, or not even understanding their claim process or, or what's, what's going on. So we're going to be traveling around the state listening to veterans one-on-one, uh, -on -one, hearing what their concerns are, hearing what their issues are, and, and start formulating um, progress. Uh, we had uh, this situation with the LaSalle Veterans Home. Uh, we looked into that very closely this session. We did four or five hours of testimony. We have a new director of Illinois Department of Veterans Affairs uh, doing a, a great job working with him with all these issues. Um, also, worked with the governor's office. All you veterans out there you, that got your COVID shot, at the VA, you are included in the lottery. So you're included oh, yeah. in the lottery. We got you included in the lottery. Amen. <laughs> it was just a little glitch in the system. We were able to work with the VA. Yeah. Uh, we got you all included, and um, I hope a veteran wins the, wins the lottery for the great. COVID. So be? I got my vaccine. You got your I vaccine. Got mine. Uh, uh, get uh, your vaccine. Yeah. Uh, the VA has been <clears throat> great. They were great with that vaccine. You know, they were. I went in there, and they, they had called, and they said, hey, look, we've got a bunch of openings. You know, if you have any of your, your buddies that are veterans and they haven't had their vaccination, mm -hmm. bring them in. Oh, and, they're great. And, I mean, they, we walked in, we walked out, 20 minutes. 
yep. we were done. Oh, and you know, you forgot to mention, speaking of that, uh, my son's in the Navy. So we have Army, Marines, Navy, you not carry, the Air you Force. You've got the whole gambit covered. <laughs> not, my, my son's going to have to find an Air Force girl, I guess. But um, <laughs> he's at Great Lakes right now. He's shipping out to Virginia at the end of August. Okay. So, God uh, bless him. And he just got his, uh, his vaccine as well. And um, finally... I know, I'm taking up all your time. Oh, no, There's a lot that went on. No, no, um, I want to hear we've it. We've been working me. now for the last couple of years to get a certified veteran support specialist. It's called a CVSS. And what this means is that we are recognizing veteran peer-to-peer individuals and peer-to-peer therapy in the state of Illinois uh, as a certified credential. And that helps with insurance. That helps with um, individuals that might be on Medicaid get the help that they need right. through, a, through a specialist that, um, as you know, is very, very uh, in tune who's a veteran, what the veteran needs. And then always I am continuing uh, to serve on the governor's challenge against veteran suicide. So uh, we are working very diligently. And in this year's budget, uh, we are able to allocate $5 million to suicide prevention for that's veterans a, and amazing. adolescents. So and that's very, for the veterans. Uh, not all of it, For suicide prevention, some of it will go to veterans. Right. Some of it will go to our adolescents. Suicide, unfortunately, is one of the leading causes of death right. in our 11 to 15-year-olds. And uh, But overall, we're working really hard to um, just fight that demon. You know, we're, so many. we're losing 22 veterans a day. And and I don't believe that number is even realistic anymore. I think right. it's... I think it's more than that. I mean, just based on what I hear, but it, it's amazing that we are losing, and I don't believe we're doing enough to help them. I don't think they're getting the help that they need. I really don't. Well, I'm in constant contact with the VA, and they are um, adding programs left and right, art therapy and, and all the therapies, but I, I do think that the key is is that peer-to-peer support network that we are building and through the certified veteran support specialists and through peer-to-peer networks we, that we will get there. But um, there's a lot of frustration when, when veterans go to seek help and they have somebody that just doesn't understand right. veterans or the veteran culture or even myself. I, I served at Camp Pendleton. I served in Okinawa, Japan. I was not deployed. Um, I can't, I, I, I feel like I can talk to a veteran about veterans issues, but I, right. I am lacking cause I didn't go to war. I didn't see what was over there in the sandbox. I don't have that knowledge, but if you can put two individuals together that can support themselves right. that were there, it's, it's uh, powerful and that's where we're lacking. And that's what we're working on in the state of Illinois. You know, w- uh, canine and built the forgotten warrior memorial in Shanahan state uh-huh. park specifically to honor our veterans who committed suicide because of their PTSD. And I think the purpose that, the reason why we built that was to help honor those families. They give them some closure because, you know, Stephanie, there's no recognition at all. When a veteran commits suicide because of his PTSD, there is nothing for them. There's no acknowledgement at all that their suicide was a direct result of their service to our country. And I think that should be changed. I think we need to do something about that. Because it was a direct cause of their service to our country. And, and there's no, nothing for them. So when we built a memorial, it was to honor those families, to let them know that somebody does recognize that their son or daughter and the loss that they suffered was recognized by someone. That it wasn't it, in vain. It I mean, is. It is. And um, hopefully through our task force, we'll look at instances like that as well as what yeah. what the VA is not looking at. Not only, you know, symptoms from burn pits, but but suicide from those that uh, that served. And, and especially it's heartbreaking when, when individuals take their own life when they're on active duty. Oh, I it, just it's, had one. It, yeah. It's, it's not, even, um, not even acknowledged mm-hmm. at all that of uh, their service. You know, I, I just think that when our veterans are discharged because of their PTSD, I, I, you know, the family thinks that Joe's coming back home just the way he was mm-hmm. when he left. And he's not. He's not the same person. Right. Okay, and I think they're not preparing the family or the veteran enough when they come home and they're discharged with because of their PTSD. Well, they're not the same person, but anybody that leaves, right. even my son, you know, I'm preparing for him to be a totally different person than the person right. that left, and uh, regardless of where he served, but any military um, service member who leaves, they come back a different person. I came right. back a different person, um, but those individuals that... Um, 
suffered casualties of their unit and, and war overseas comes back uh, with a, a couple more demons that we need to acknowledge. In fact, there right. was a woman, I uh, traveled the state talking about um, suicide, veteran suicide, and, and uh, uh, one of the men said that he was in a bad way, but if it was for his wife, and we, we asked the wife, what did you do? And he said, she said, oh, my dad was a World War II veteran. And he went through all the same things my husband did, who was a Vietnam veteran. Acknowledging and reaching out to the families is so important as well. Right. I mean, mm-hmm. we have a lot of Vietnam veterans in our service dog program that didn't receive any help when they got out. There was nothing right. known for them at that time. But fortunately, that's changing every day because of stuff that you're doing to help our veterans. If it wasn't for representatives like yourself making those changes, those changes would never be made. You know, because we do the service dogs and provide them to our veterans, um, you, there was a, when we have a dog that we can house at our training center, we have to give them to a foster, to foster in their home until Mm -hmm. the dog is ready to be placed or come in for its training. Right. Well, our fosters will be in charge of money to foster <laughs> right. these dogs. Right. I mean, and then you came around and you co-sponsored the bill mm-hmm. to change that to where if you're fostering a dog, that there's no fee. They can't charge you for that. Correct. Is that, is that how that works? Right. What Correct was happening is they were getting double charged. So we are charging the Humane Society, whatever society that they were working under to foster the animals. And then we were charging the individuals that were fostering additional fees. And so, again, um, please, anybody out there, reach out and connect with your representative or your state senator. Just call them up and say hello because these issues come across our desks. We pass legislation to ensure that... um, that those things, those foster uh, homes that have dogs, I have a foster dog, a little little pit bull mix, uh, 45 pounds, I call it little. Yeah. I know some people don't call it little. Uh, but it's very important, and they do a great job in our community, so they we should be. We couldn't yeah. work without them because, you know, we if we get a dog that we don't have room at the center, and we don't want to pass on that dog because right. it is a good dog, but it's just not ready to go to a mm-hmm. veteran to start training, we need to find a foster home for it. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, so if you tell them, well, you know, will you foster this dog? And, you know, now you're going to have to pay. Right. Or the not-for-profit's going to have to pay. Right. And we've been struggling enough through this pandemic to, right. to, to begin with. So it's just been crazy. Well, we had another bill uh, this year. Um, like, your dogs are trained. But a lot of veterans, they have dogs that are emotional support animals. Mm-hmm. Not, not they, don't, they don't go through the training. They're not, you know. They don't provide any but tasks. They're, they're, they're emotional support animals. And uh, what we are finding is that there's a discrimination uh, between these animals in, in housing. So we passed a bill this year uh, that um, would allow some parameters in, in multifamily housing, such as up to 75 pounds for the, for the dog, one dog. Uh, but we found that the number one reason why animals get into the pound or the foster care system is because of housing and being denied bringing their right. loved one, their loved animal, their loved one into the uh, new housing. So we had to pass a law that would that's starting to uh, work to eliminate that discrimination. Um, and, and I'll be quite honest, I've had big dogs that are just lumps. <laughs> little dogs that tear up everything. So the fact that they say bigger dogs can yeah. destroy more, I think, it's, is a bit yeah, of a fallacy. It's just a dog. So yeah. working on that, because veterans have dogs that are emotional dogs. They're not right. uh, certified service dogs or certified through your program, but um, they help them. They help them get through the night. They help them, and we should not um, be forcing people to have to relinquish their These their service dogs. dogs, they provide such a, a, a resource to our veterans. Um it's unbelievable what they do for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, a lot of them will tell you that, you know, I, I don't know where I would be if it wasn't for the service dog. They've calmed me down. I'm taking less medicine right. than I was before I had my service dog. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and then, and I love when they go to a public building and they have the vest on and yep. they have the tag on, that you know, everything is, you know, all the IDs that they need. And then they turn around and say, you can't come in with that dog. Well, they're, they're an established service dog, and, and this is something that I had to go and call, make calls to Uber and Lyft 
because Uber and Lyft had drivers that were denying service dogs right. and their veterans. And uh, I had to I call. We talked about that. I, I, I got um, my message, got all the way up to the people where it had to be, and they reiterated that, and they sent to all their drivers that they are not to deny a ride to a veteran and their service dog. I, based on your call to them, <laughs> okay, I got a personal email from the vice president of operations telling me straight out that they put a memorandum out to their drivers that if anybody gets caught refusing to provide service to a, a legitimate service dog, that they, they won't be with Lyft anymore or, or Uber. Yeah. I mean, I mean that, the guy was straightforward with it. Mm -hmm. You know, when he was told that, you know, because a lot of our guys, uh, would, if they're waiting for Uber or Lyft mm -hmm. and the guy pulls up and they see the guy with the, the veteran with the service dog, They'll, they'll just pull away. Right, right. You know, and they're now they're running late for their appointment to the VA, mm -hmm. to the doctor's appointment, and there, there was just nothing you could do about it. Well, there's something I can do about it. You so did. So I made the call. You did. And, and, and that call resulted in a personal email response <laughs> from the vice president of Uber. Yep. Apologizing that their drivers would do that to a veteran. It's terrible. But, you know, again, it's that awareness and it's education. Right. In fact, I made a call to, uh, we had a veteran here in the district get accepted to college in New York. And uh, he was told that he was not allowed to bring his, his service dog in right. housing. And uh, I, I sent an email uh, to the dean of housing and, and got that weighed for him. God bless. You know, so I'm going to make a call. I'm going to send an email on behalf of any veteran in the whole state of Illinois. If I need to help them out, I'll be there. So. Well, you were um, you were at one of our service dog presentations, yeah. and if Blue <laughs> could set that up for us, um, there you are. You you were <laughs> walking in a service dog that you mm -hmm. presented to a veteran, and that is a total game changer for our veterans. Okay, it was so we were honored to have you there. Because of, you know, you're just not a state representative. You have such a personal interest in our veterans that you're just rare. Okay, well, I mean, veterans really. have to help veterans. Well, we have to help you know each what, other. and that's why we need more <laughs> veterans in the, in the house to to do that to understand what it means to be a veteran and what our veterans are lacking. And you, you have that air about you that you know you put our veterans first. I mean. So and, and it's just a great thing that you're doing for our veterans and stuff. Um, what are your plans? Any any future bills that you want to talk about? Um, everything is always in the mix, and so uh, again, uh, anybody can call me or or email me. Uh, you can Google my name; my phone number pops up. Uh, Kifowit right. K I F O W I T, <laughs> and. Um, you can go to ilga.gov to look up my office numbers. But please, if there's any veteran out there that has an idea for uh, bills or legislations, right now what we are working on, and, and you touched upon it, is um, discharge papers. So we're working on individuals that might have uh, post-traumatic stress injury. I didn't correct you, but I say injury. Uh, post-traumatic stress injury or uh, military sexual trauma or any um, mental stress that they had in the military are getting less than honorable discharges from the military. And therefore, because they're getting general or other than honorable or even worse than that, they don't qualify for state programs. And so what we're doing is we're reviewing and we're going to be looking at legislation to honor our veterans who um, I have an honorable discharge, but some don't, yeah. but to honor our veterans for their service and to allow them to qualify for state programs. So that's what we're working on uh, with regards to, to that first and foremost. And then, then again, um, making sure that programs are in place that the LaSalle Veterans Homes, all our veterans homes and our veterans in our veterans homes are safe. And then continuing the, the work to um, ensure that veterans get the support they need. For, Stephanie, we, we definitely need more representatives <laughs> like you. Uh, for what you're doing for the veterans, it's just an amazing thing. Uh, I can't thank you enough for putting our, our veterans first. And like you said, we need more legislation, legislators in office that have yeah. been a veteran and know what we're going through. Absolutely. So, and you know what? For being a state representative, you're the most reachable person <laughs> I know. I mean, we can pick up the phone and call you and talk yeah. to you. 
I mean, that's almost unheard of. Usually you got to go through six different people, leave nope. 10 different messages, <laughs> and drop, I don't know how many emails. With you, I make a phone call, I talk to your rep. Okay, and, you, and you're right there. Yep. Yeah, so, I try to be there for everybody. My cell phone's out yeah, there on my website. That's amazing. And, and thanks for what you do. The canines do so much for so many people. So we, we you guys put do our a good job too. For us. Thank you. Yeah. And, and you're working on something for us. We are. We're always working on funding and supporting greater organizations. So well, and we'll get into that. It's 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 bill number uh, HB three ninety, I believe. Yes. Off yes. the top of my head, I'm. I hope you're right. I don't have it in front right. of me. So. Me too. But it's to provide a grant mm -hmm. to K9 for Veterans through the state of Illinois, and Stephanie is a co-sponsor. So anybody who doesn't think that Stephanie isn't doing above and beyond for our <laughs> veterans, go to HB uh, three ninety. Look at that bill. Look, she look what she's doing to provide services to our veterans for a service dog. It's a, it's just a great bill. And, and other groups, other veteran groups, need all the support they can get. So I want to thank you for being my guest tonight. Thank it's you. It's been an amazing run. <laughs> and just keep doing what you're doing. Keep putting our veterans first. And, and that's what you do. That's all you I know. do. God bless you. And thank, thank you for you. your time. Well, thank you for having me. My pleasure.